All right, so I'm gonna walk you through painting this landscape step by step, and I really want you to try and paint this. When you're done, if you post it to Instagram, make sure to tag me in it at Forza43 and use the hashtag paintcoach. I'll put the photo up right now so you can take a screenshot, and the dimensions here are three by four, so you can paint this on a six by eight, nine by 12, 16 by 20. All right, let's take a look at the photo reference and talk about that first. I actually got this photo on a trip I took to Virginia a year ago. I had a great time, did some plein air painting, got a whole bunch of great reference photos. And the cool thing about reference photos is you never know when you're gonna come back to them or when you'll come across an old photo that you didn't think would make a good painting and now that you've gotten better and you have more skills, you do see a painting in it. And that's what happened here. I was kind of scrolling through old photos. I was like, ooh, that would make a great painting. And so why does this make a good painting? Well, a few reasons. One, I feel like I don't even have to change much, which is very rare for landscape photos where you don't have to like really move or change anything. I like this road. It's a great lead in to the picture, really brings the viewer's eye in. If you look at the overall big shapes, none of them are the same. You know, this tree is, is taller and bigger than this right here. This is bigger than the tree. This side is smaller than this side. A majority of the painting is in shadow. Everything below this line is in shadow and everything above it is in light. And that's good. That's what you call drama in a scene when you have like a lot of one thing and a little bit of the other. We have so much of the grass and shadow here that it makes this one part that is in the light that much more dramatic and cool looking. It leads to a perfect focal point, which is where this darkest dark of the tree comes in contact with the lightest light of this grass. And it's great because it's right here. It's not in the center of the canvas, which is good. It's also got good drama in terms of colors. We got a bunch of cool greens and blues and purples happening here. Contrast with a lot of, you know, warmer purples and uh, yellows and greens and oranges happening in the background. Now, actually, the only thing I would want to change is I would like to get a couple light spots in all this shadow to kind of like lead us up to uh, the light spot there in our focal point. So what I'm gonna do is take some of the sky color, and I know if I put that in, in this road here, and just like make some simple shapes, I can get it to read as uh, puddles on the road. So now if I do something like this, I have more movement and it kind of bring your eye through these to, you know, the final light area. Now this idea came to me of putting these puddles here from observing real life. Now I do go out and do plein air painting and that's a great way to observe from life. But even if you can't go out and plein air paint, always be observing things in real life. Like I got this puddle idea from my morning walks. I take a walk every morning and one time I saw this road that I actually thought might be a good painting scene, but I noticed these puddles one day and how it is reflecting the sky. I was like, oh, like that's cool because even in the shadows, if you have like one of those puddles there, it can be a good light spot. And that could be a helpful little trick that's simple to add to any scene that I could use. So always be observing and always be taking mental notes of things that you see and how light works out in the real world. Now, the first thing I do is a little three by four inch value sketch, meaning I sketch out the composition and block it out in three values, a dark, a mid-tone, and a light. This is gonna help organize my composition in terms of the big values, which is very important. After that, I do a small little study in my painting sketchbook, which is made of craft paper, and I do use oils in it. You know, it takes about 20 or 30 minutes. It's just a little test run to figure out any problems that this scene might cause me or figure out the colors, if there's anything they need to change. Just to kind of like a little practice run to get me ready for the final painting. On my palette, I have ultramarine blue, a phthalo green, lizen crimson, burnt sienna, cadmium red, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow light, and titanium white. And I'm using some Gamblin solvent free gel as my medium. Now I won't be going over color mixing in this video. I try not to go over like what colors I mix in my YouTube videos because I believe that can hinder people from getting a better understanding of color. Don't think of color mixing as a recipe where it's like, oh, how do you get that green? Oh, well you mix one part this, one part that, and two parts this. It's better to understand just how color works. It'll make you much more self-sufficient as a painter. And the best way to do that is to understand how to mix any color using the primaries. So 
if you don't know that and you want to learn that, I actually offer the color mixing video for my Foundations of Oil Painting course for free. If you want to check that out, the link to it is in the description of this video. So first up, I mix up a brown just using some burnt sand and ultramarine blue. Put a wash of it with paint thinner on my panel and wipe it with a paper towel to get a neutral value to start on. And then I sketch out my composition and then I block out the dark values and wipe off the paint on the light values. This is kind of my value map to keep me on track as I add color. But I will put up a photo of the final painting here with my colors isolated so you can take a screenshot of that to help you figure out the colors for when you paint this yourself. Next, I block out the big shapes using flat color. Now the paint's pretty thin at this point, so I'm going to be adding a lot more colors and values on top of this. And I'm just getting an average of the values, never the darkest dark or the lightest light that I see. And my initial goal here is to get the entire canvas covered with paint and have all these big shapes in and have it reading, meaning the light areas look light and the dark areas look dark. Meaning in this one, this little strip of grass in the back that's getting hit with sunlight needs to look like it's getting hit with sunlight. Now for this hill in the back, I do split it up in terms of shadow and light. I have the shadow be more of a cool blue. The light areas of these trees are more of a desaturated purple. You know, this hill's far in the distance, so the color is going to be desaturated, there's not gonna be much of any yellow. A lot of the yellow is gonna drop out and switch to reds. So it's kind of like a reddish purple. And this doesn't have to be exactly perfect right now. It just has to be enough to get a sense of the big picture. And again, once the canvas is covered with paint, everything should be working pretty well right now. Yeah, it's not perfect, but the main idea of the scene is working, meaning all this area in the foreground that's in shadow is reading like it's in shadow, and the part in the back that's in sunlight is reading like it's in sunlight. If it's not at this point, I would wanna go back and alter and change my values and my colors so it is working at this point. It's a lot easier to change it now and fix it now while everything is very simple than later down the road once you've put in a bunch of details. If you have to at this point, take a photo of your painting and put it in black and white and check that all your values are working as they should. So now I'm gonna go in and start finessing out more specific colors and values within these big flat shapes. Like in this tree here, I'm finding some lighter values. Now I'm not going super light, like this tree still has to read as one of the darker values, but I'm adding in some lighter values to give it more form. Do the same thing with the grass in the shadow. And again, be very careful not to make this too light. I'm constantly comparing it to the strip of grass in the back and light. And I will know if I have put in the grass and shadow too bright, if that strip of grass in the back stops looking like it's getting hit with sunlight. That's my key for the painting. And it's how I'm going to check my values as I go. Also notice how I'm portraying the form of this hill with my brushwork. I'm having my brush strokes go in the direction of the hill as if I'm wrapping the paint around the form of that hill. Always keep the direction of your brush strokes in mind. They shouldn't just be arbitrary. Think about it like you're wrapping the paint around whatever it is that you're painting. And as I'm going around here, adding in new colors and values, I'm constantly adjusting things around it. Like I never stay in one area too long. If I lighten up one area, it's going to make me see the other areas differently. And I'm gonna go and adjust them. I'm gonna bounce around the painting, dialing things in you. Oh, I need to make this darker. I need to make this lighter. I need to make this warmer. I need to make this cooler. I'm never developing one area too much too fast. As I add in more shapes into these hills back here, I wanna make sure I'm keeping the edges of these shapes softer. That's gonna help sit all of this in the distance more. If I have a bunch of crisp hard edges in these hills, it's going to bring it forward more and it's just not gonna look right. You know, you're not gonna get that crisp of edges in something that's that far away. So don't be afraid to work wet into wet paint here and soften those edges. One of the most helpful things I can tell you about oil painting is that it's all about adjusting. You're never gonna paint in one area perfectly right the first time. You have to paint in that area, then move to another area, which is gonna make you look at that previous area differently. And you're just gonna have to do that with all the areas of the painting. And this will happen all the way to the end of the painting. Like I got to a point where I thought I was done, but I realized that my strip of grass in the back that was supposed to be reading as in sunlight just wasn't popping as much as I wanted to. And I knew I'd already gone as bright as I could go with that grass. So I knew, okay, well, that means I need to darken everything around it to make it look brighter. And so I did, like I darkened this hill, pushed the purple in it a little bit more. I also went in and darkened the road. I realized I had gotten too caught up in trying to match the photo. And always understand, do what's right for the painting, not exactly what you see in the photo. 
Photos can be deceiving sometimes and tricky and you're not a copying machine. You know, you need to make decisions and if you want something to seem brighter, chances are you're going to have to make the dark areas seem darker. So don't be afraid to do what's right for the painting, even if it means going against exactly what you see in the photo. All right, so let's talk about the final painting here. Um, first off, you can see I added in like a bunch of like smaller shapes in the road in the foreground here. I still like worked them in to the wet paint of the road. Like there's not like a lot of harsh edges. It's kind of subtle shifts in color, but having more brushwork up front and you can see I have less as I go back here. Like the, you know, this part of the road looks like it's just kind of like three brush strokes right there. Um, that's going to bring this part of the road forward and push that back. So, you know, more detail up front, less detail up back. I created some form in these strips of grass in the front by having the center be lighter than the edges. Like you can see these little strips right here are darker and it's lighter here. And that's just gonna lift it off the ground a little more and give it some more volume. As I said before, with this hill, like my brushwork is going, you know, over this hill you know, it's coming down. To understand the shadows, there's still difference in light. And if you think about the form of this hill, you kind of have this as like a wall and this is the top flat part. And this is gonna be catching more light. It's just gonna be catching reflected light from the sky. This side, since it's not perfectly flat, is gonna be catching less. That's why it's darker. But you can see with all the brushwork here, I'm going with the flow of the land. I kept this tree up here really simple. You know, I still put in lighter shapes and values. I didn't completely get rid of the dark shapes that are the deepest areas of the tree. And I definitely kept the dark areas on the outside that run into this light strip to help with it being my focal point. So I have this really dark value next to this really light value. And this hill back here is a little tricky. Um, it definitely took some finesse and getting the right like desaturation of color and uh, value of color, not going too bright. I feel like that's a common uh, mistake people are gonna make. You know, like these areas that are the brightest areas, they're not that bright, you know, that's still pretty desaturated, still relatively dark, you know, compared to, you know, like a bright area here, you know, it's a lot different. You know, you wouldn't want this up here to be as bright as this down here. So keep all of that in mind as you go through the painting. All right, hope you enjoyed that video. Again, if you paint this and you post it on Instagram, make sure to tag me at Forza43 and use the hashtag paint coach. If you'd like some more full painting video tutorials, I got those on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.